The block was clean. I'm going to just say it. I know stripes were great. Stripes are always great. That's been the bit all season long. But I'm going to just lead off with the simple fact of the matter and the story of this game. The block was clean. Sanford got robbed. They should have the ball down one, 15 seconds left, with a chance to win this game and have a magical March moment. Instead, they lose the game. That's what happened. I'm okay with stripes making the wrong call because that's what stripes do. Stripes are always great no matter what. What I'm not going to accept is stripes ruining March magic. That's where I that's where I put my foot down. They ruin March mad. They ruin March magic in March madness cuz that block was very clean. And also, I saw a couple people comment on this saying like, "Oh, that ref can't make that call in that situation. Oh, any ref is making that call." I, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of refs out there, and that's kind of what their their job is to make that to make that call right there. Um, and it seemed like a pretty easy one to me. I don't know. There's a lot of refs out there. That's a great line. Uh, you're right, though. You're right. Yeah. Look, the block was clean. Hashtag uh, shout out Trey Burke. That's what that was. That was the Trey Burke block. Just a decade later, same exact shit. Except this one was more direct in the way it contributed to this game being over. The Trey Burke block happened with a few minutes left. You don't know what's going to happen. Uh, this one was insurmountable, right? Timberlake goes to the line. As long as Timberlake hits the two free throws, you no longer have a chance to win the game. You're just playing with a chance to tie. Sanford came down, threw some bullshit up. It didn't go in. But, like, they got raw. They should have had the ball with a chance to win. And you can't tell me, like, uh, it's obviously such a one, uh, such an unknown but the way that building was rocking, the way the energy was there, and the way that Kansas's players, the freshmen, El Marco Jackson, Johnny Furphy, uh, even Nick Timberlake, who just got a little sped up there, those guys were reacting in the moment to the meltdown of the building in a way that if Sanford had the ball with a chance to win, I think they're more mistake prone defensively than they are when they know Sanford can't win. They're just playing to tie. Like that's a whole different mindset as a player. You're more clear-minded when you know you can't lose the game in one shot. So I, I think they got robbed. Um, with that said, that's all I'm going to say about the refs. I'm glad we got that out of the way because the other person that robbed Sanford tonight was Sanford. Uh, I thought this was a pretty awful game from Sanford, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. I just mean it in a sense that I don't. I can't believe this is what they do every game. Uh, I know they ended up hitting a bunch of shots late and Bucky ball supposed to be fun. They deserve to lose this game like massively the way it was played on paper. Like they just uh, run and jump and leaving dudes wide open behind them. Hunter Dickinson making great passes. KJ Adams was destroying them inside like this. This is a game that if Kevin McCullough plays Kansas wins by 30. Yeah. hundred percent. It's a, it's a, you know, I know this might not resonate with people who listen to this, but back in high school, we used to play Pershing High School, really good Detroit public school in, in Michigan. And they did like the same buckyball type thing where they would do like this press. But all you really had to do if you were good is just throw the ball down and go score. And everyone just got the score and score and score. And that's what happened in this game. Uh, I, I get that it's fun and enjoyable. But I, I I agree with you, Greg. I was on the same page. As you. Like some of the things they were doing defensively were just like, like come on now. Like there's there's chaos, there's fun, and then there's just like you need to actually have some defensive principles. And then on the offensive end, is it okay if I use coach speak? Please. You lost the game by four. You shot thirteen from twenty three from the free throw line. I'm sorry. I got to bring out coach speak. Like it, it, they, the coaches always say, like, if you lose a game by single digits, look right at the free throw line first before you complain about anything else about the game. You went 13 for 23 from the line. Like, yeah, that's 13 points left on the board, and you lost a game by four. And, you know, yes, the call was bad that we talked about, but all the momentum was on your side to take this game, and they just weren't able to capitalize. Yeah, they, like, I really struggle, man. I don't know how they clawed back into this. Other than, like, El Marco and Furphy weren't playing well and weren't ready for the. And Furphy, I, I take it back. Furphy, his line ended up really, really good if you want a box score watch. But well, uh, I tested me. He was turning it over. 
Greg, I don't want to cut you off. They turned the ball. I'll tell you how they got in. They turned the ball over eight times. Let me let me list who had these turnovers. <laughs> Donnie Furphy, four turnovers. Dewan Harris Jr., four turnovers. El Marco Jackson, who are all praising for what he did, five turnovers. Yeah. And in his time, like it's they turned the ball over 18 times. And I was gonna get to it at the end, but now I'm just gonna get to it now. I love Dewan Harris. I do. But the passes that he gets, in my opinion, are starting to poke at me and irk at me. If you have a point guard that has played so much basketball and has trusted and won national titles and done this and won Big 12 titles and hung banners and done all this, why does it always seem like this team is always panicking? Like, is, isn't isn't that supposed to be the great equalizer that you have this great point guard to calm things down? Why is this team always panicking and frantic, it seems like? I can't blame Dewan for the guys around him here. I can't. I uh All right, I'm um, okay. That's uh, okay. Look, I I this is my large takeaway from this. Uh I give the Kansas players credit who stepped up and they played without McCullough and we never even recorded this on video or talked about it, but like they clearly are pissed at Kevin McCullough. Clearly, and I, I I don't care if Kansas fans yell at me for that. They're, they're clearly upset with him. The way Bill Self used very pointed language and the way Hunter hit the podium and said, I'm going to be there for my teammates, but be there for my teammates. Repeat, Like, come on. We know what's happening here. Y'all thought Kevin was going to play through an injury, and he told you I'm not. His camp shut him down. And so here you are thinking, oh, shit, we can't win a national title anymore. And you can't. I'll, I'm like, just going to say, I don't think this team can win a national title. I don't think that's a hot take. I think this team is quite fortunate to survive this game. Uh, outside of Dickinson and Adams and Harris, everybody else on this court could have been in a Samford uniform and I wouldn't look twice. <laughs> Period. Like, I just, Nick Timberlake, have you ever seen Nick Timberlake look so comfortable? I mean, good God, right? Like, that's, he looked up and was like, Ooh, like the claws from Toy Story, the claw. Like that's Nick Timberlake, like Sanford. Right, he kind of looks like those little characters too from the vending machine or whatever it, it is. Just ridiculous, dude. And like, I'm happy for him because they played well. But like, did y'all see who was in a Sanford uniform in this game? Like, they, the fact that they like kind of flirted with not playing well against this team is crazy to me. And I know I'm downplaying it. And I picked Sanford to win this game before the game, so I look stupid in hindsight. I, I, I was just so unimpressed, man. I thought the the real Sanford team, who they really are, was the team that was down twenty very quickly in this game. And I know they're scrappy. They didn't give up. Bucky deserves some credit for that. I thought this was much more Kansas letting them hang around than it was Sanford going and stealing the game. Yeah, it's it's crazy that Kansas was even in a dogfight in a game where they shot 60% from the floor. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, I think the thing is, like, you talked about how the, the effects of McCullough not being in offensively affect them. Defensively, it hurts them as well. Yeah. Because Big Timberlake time. can't check a soul. No. A soul. Like, McCullough is their best defender. And a, a him not having him out there like hurts him immensely. Um, I do got to say, after all that we talked about, it's just it's also hilarious that not hilarious, but like Hunter Dickinson's stat line just like ridiculous. I was gonna get there. Uh, he deserves it. He deserves it. Hunter had twenty and nineteen. He was one point away from twenty and twenty, so nineteen points, twenty rebounds. Uh, with that said, Carl- five five assists, four blocks. Five assists, four blocks. With that said, uh, I, I'm not surprised by the 20 rebounds here. Did again? Did you see? Did you see Sanford? Like, <laughs> dog. I, I'm pretty sure they play a little person. I'm pretty sure, <laughs> and I don't mean I don't mean that disrespectfully. But like, you're, you're, there's some some very that's small so human beings. I know you don't mean it, but that's just so disrespectful. There's some very small human beings on the Sanford team. Okay, so like. Hunter did what Hunter should do. He's one of the best centers in the country. Go get 20 rebounds against this Sanford team. Like, Right. I mean, he had 18 defensive rebounds because basically just Sanford missing and he's just there. I, you're right. Nobody's trying to get a rebound. Um, Look, man. Hunter was great. <laughs> Hunter was great. At the, in, in all seriousness, Hunter, uh, his passing was awesome in this game because – 
Samford does put you in spots where if you aren't strong with the ball and smart and decisive, you can give things away. That's what Furphy did. That's what El Marco did. That's what Timberlake did. Hunter did not. And I thought Bill Self was really smart to use him to break the press. It was like the ball was in Hunter's hands every time near half court, a little behind it. And he would make these crazy skip passes. The one, the big one to end the game over the top to KJ Adams. Again, I have no idea what Sanford was doing defensively on that play. Sure. Just leave KJ Adams wide open. Nobody within 30 yards of him to dunk the game. Like, so many stupid things. And I feel like Bucky went to the locker room and was like, great game, guys. Played it to perfection. And I'm just like, dog, can we dial it back just a little bit? I'm so out on Bucky Ball. So while, out. While we went out there, we buckied him. They bucked us back. Sometimes you just get bucked. Am I right? All right, bring it in. Bulldogs on three. You can, you can never buck a bill. That's what I learned in this. You, you cannot buck a bill. Ooh. And uh, apparently you can't buck a dick either because Dickinson was incredible. Just not comfortable with how both of our episodes have ended, but I'm okay. I'm okay with it. Um, I know this isn't the preview for the next game, but just very quickly, one of the two sentences or just answer this question. Does Kansas win another game in this tournament? God, no. God, God no. Okay. God, no. No chance? Okay. No, there's right. a ch- there's a chance because it's Bill Self and they're playing Gonzaga, who I also think is not a great basketball team. But the Gonzaga I saw tonight against McNeese would beat the Kansas I saw tonight against Sanford by 26 points. If Gonzaga played Sanford tonight, Gonzaga wins by 40. Very, uh, actually, very true, to be honest. Yeah. So, and again, like Hunter, give Hunter all the credit in the world. They needed 19, 20, and 5 from Hunter to beat Sanford by 4. <laughs> That's definitely not ideal. It's not great. Uh, their bench stinks, too. I, this Kansas team stinks, man. It's Whose fault is this? Is this Bill South's fault? Is this McCullough's fault? Is this nobody's fault? It's Bill Self's fault. It's Self's fault. It's Self. It might be McCullough's fault. It's Self and Arterio Morris's fault. Oh, Jesus. Redacted. Redacted. Um, Also, don't want to – we're not going to go off on a tangent on this episode, but I do want to get this out there. What Self and Hunter are doing are bullshit, by the way. Oh, go ahead. Tell me more. It's just like I, like – I don't know. The 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 whole dynamic is just like coaches can do whatever they want. Coaches can do this, do that, leave, do whatever they want. And like, I, I'm just, I'm not a, ever a fan of throwing a player under the bus in this situation and approaching it the way they approached it. I, I just think that that's bullshit in my opinion. Okay. And, and it, show, it shows the coach's colors. They've both been backtracking for what it's worth. I think they got enough backlash. My read was like these these two thought collectively they could say whatever they want without backlash and the fan base would be like, oh, yeah, Kevin owes us. And instead, like Bill Self had the weird announcement that he's out and then Hunter hit the podium and immediately was like, yeah, I'll be there for my teammates. And then everybody, rightfully so, in Kansas circles was like, that was rude and weird, guys. Like Kevin is our best player and played his ass off this year. And then Bill Self had to like go on Twitter publicly the morning of a game and be like, just want to correct some things. And then I I think Hunter did something on camera where he was like, I just want to make it known. Like Kevin's, I saw how hard he worked to get back. He's really good. It's like, and keep that same energy. If you're going to do the first one, do it the whole time, you know? Yeah. Like if you feel that, and if you feel that way, like well, I don't agree with it, but like, just don't go out and just, just throw a dude under the bus. A dude who might I add that you pointed out has at times carried your ass this year. Like without Kevin McCullough this season, this team's like I don't know. I don't know where they are. They're not in the NIT, I don't think, but they're damn sure not a four seed. Yeah, hundred percent. So oh. I did again. Well, but this is why it's such a weird dynamic because if McCullough was here, they win this by twenty something, and Self and Hunter know that, and Self and Hunter are pissed. Like I'm seeing McCullough. He also was playing like a week ago. So would you give your life for Hunter Dickinson and risk your future for Hunter Dickinson? No, but I think Kevin McCullough thinks he's risking a future that he's not risking. And I'm not, that's not me speculating on an injury. I just, 
what's he think he's a lottery pick? Like what are are the are the Guangdong Tigers really upset that like what's yeah. what's going on here? I just I don't know. I don't I and again he might find his way to the NBA. I'm sure he'll probably get drafted, but like I don't I don't think he's winning over NBA teams by sitting out the NCAA tournament right now. Do you know where I could place a bet on Kevin McCullers next team? Yeah, at my bookie. That's our exclusive partner for all things Sleepers Media. Uh, I don't think they actually have that prop. They have everything else. They have odds boosts, futures, player props, special uh, offers, and expert predictions and picks as well. That's what we try to help you out with here. Uh, if you want to bet with us at my bookie, there is a promo code Sleepers where you can get a up to a thousand dollar deposit match bonus for first time users. Uh, go check that out. The link is in the description. Rock chalk. I might have to use that bonus. I got my ass whooped today. 